Think you absolutely need a rooster to get a high-producing egg flock? Think again. What if I told you that the noisy boy in your coop is actually the biggest obstacle standing between you and a basket overflowing with eggs? Take a look at these results. A consistent 87% production rate achieved in just days, simply by making one controversial change. Most homesteaders believe a rooster is a must-have for motivation, but today I'm going to show you why removing the roosters was the best financial and technical decision Jack ever made for his farm. If you want more eggs, healthier birds, and a more profitable operation, you're in the right place, because we're about to break down the science behind the rooster-free coop. Jack was a dedicated poultry keeper who, like many of us, followed the old-school rules passed down at the local feed store for generations. He had 30 high-quality layers and two dominant roosters that ruled the yard with an iron fist, yet his egg baskets were never quite as full as the genetics of his birds promised. He was feeling a lot of pressure from neighbors who told him that a coop without a rooster was a dead coop with no spirit or protection. However, after noticing the ragged feathers and the constant state of high alert in his best hens, Jack decided to ignore the folklore and try something radical for 30 days to see the real data. What happened next didn't just surprise the neighbors, it left Jack himself absolutely speechless when he checked the nesting boxes the following week. The very first morning after the coop settled into its new peaceful silence, the production numbers started to climb in a way he had never seen in years of breeding. He collected 26 eggs from those 30 hens, hitting that incredible 87% mark and holding it steady week after week. This experience completely shatters the myth of the motivational rooster and opens the door to a much more professional, data-driven way of managing your backyard flock for maximum yield. To understand why Jack's hens saw such a spike in production, we have to look at how social behavior affects a bird's biological output. The absence of constant chasing and mounting allows the female system to work without the hormonal interruptions caused by fear or the need for constant vigilance. When a rooster is in the run, the physical environment changes drastically because that natural mating instinct generates a psychological toll that a keeper might not see. Every time a rooster attempts to tread or mount a hen, it triggers an alert state that immediately stops her from foraging and taking in vital nutrients. This constant interruption means the hen isn't eating the consistent amount of layer feed required to build a perfect egg every single day. In Jack's case, his hens went from constantly watching their backs to dedicating every waking hour to what they do best – foraging, eating, and resting deeply. This peace of mind translates directly into what we call net available energy, which is the fuel your hens use to maintain peak production levels. The hen's body is no longer wasting precious resources on running away or trying to heal the feather loss and skin inflammation caused by sharp, aggressive spurs. Now all that biological potential is rerouted efficiently to optimize her daily laying cycle, which explains the massive jump Jack saw in his own corral. Furthermore, we have to consider that a calm coop allows hens to use the nesting boxes without any unnecessary drama or competition for space. Without a male bird hounding them, the females can choose their nesting spot with ease, which drastically lowers their stress levels before they drop an egg. This improvement in social behavior is reflected not only in the quantity, but in the cleanliness and overall professional look of the eggs you collect. If we sit down and analyze the economics with a clear head, keeping a rooster that isn't for breeding is a money pit that eats your profits. A rooster consumes just about the same amount of expensive feed as a high-producing hen, yet his return on investment in terms of product is exactly zero. If you're working with limited space and a tight budget, feeding a bird that doesn't put eggs on the table is a major strategic mistake. Jack realized pretty quickly that his bags of feed were lasting longer, and his cost per egg dropped significantly once he focused his resources solely on the producers. On top of the feed savings, there is the opportunity cost of the actual physical space inside your coop and protected run area. Jack discovered that by rehoming his two roosters, he could actually make room for three more laying hens, increasing his total yield without building new infrastructure. Even the maintenance of his gear became simpler, as roosters tend to be rougher on feeders and waterers during their territorial displays. With an all-female flock, the wear and tear on the equipment went down, which represented extra savings on repairs and replacement parts over the long haul. By separating his birds, Jack moved toward a much smarter management style, allowing each group to get the specific care their biology actually requires. This technical separation is not only more profitable, but it's also more responsible for the health of the male birds themselves. Many keepers make the mistake of feeding roosters the same high-calcium layer ration that the hens require for building daily eggshells. But that excess calcium, which sits at around 4%, is actually toxic to a rooster's kidneys because they only need about 1%. This leads to a silent killer known as visceral gout, where calcium crystals deposit on the internal organs, causing a painful and premature death. 
By giving the boys their own space, Jack was able to provide a proper maintenance diet that kept them healthy and fertile for future breeding. In this new setup, the hens established what we call the pecking order in a much more linear and peaceful way than ever before. Without a dominant male acting as a disruptive force, the hierarchies among the females became predictable and much less aggressive during the morning feeding. This allows even the birds at the bottom of the social ladder to have fair and unhurried access to the feeders and waterers. In Jack's flock, the uniformity of the birds improved drastically because there were no longer any bullied hens hiding in the corners of the barn. That nutritional equity translates into a robust health profile for every single bird in the flock, making the whole group more resilient. By cutting out social stress, the birds are better able to handle weather changes and those opportunistic diseases that target the weak members of a group. At this point, it is crucial to make a professional distinction. Jack's decision wasn't based on a whim, but on a clear definition of his farm's objective. We must understand the difference between a table egg operation and a breeding operation. Jack's primary goal was the efficient production of eggs for consumption, where every gram of feed must translate into a sellable product. In this specific scenario, a rooster is a consumer that doesn't contribute to the final output, making the hens-only approach the most logical choice for maximum yield. However, if your goal is self-sustainability and producing your own generational turnover, the rooster becomes the most valuable player on your team. Without him, your farm lacks the biological engine to produce fertile eggs, meaning you would depend entirely on external hatcheries to replace your flock every two years. A rooster ensures your farm's independence and the continuity of your specific genetics over time. If you want to hatch your own chicks and be truly autonomous, keeping a high-quality rooster is not an option. It is a necessity for the long-term survival of your homestead. The key takeaway is that Jack chose efficiency over reproduction because his business model demanded it. He wasn't looking for a dead coop, as his neighbors suggested, but a specialized production unit. By removing the males, he avoided what we call the fertility tax, the biological and economic cost of maintaining a bird that, while vital for breeding, interrupts the steady flow of table eggs. Understanding your farm's purpose is the first step in deciding whether a rooster is an asset or a liability for your specific goals. There was another benefit Jack didn't see coming, a radical improvement in his relationship with the people living in his neighborhood. By cutting out the 4 a.m. wake-up calls, his homestead became much more compatible with the local community, avoiding noise complaints and legal headaches. A quiet coop allows your poultry operation to fly under the radar, which is perfect for anyone raising birds in suburban areas or strict HOAs. This social piece also gave Jack a peace of mind he didn't have when he was constantly worried about his boy's volume and the neighbor's. Plus, the absence of a rooster makes your daily chores a breeze, making egg collection a much simpler, faster, and safer task. Many roosters can get territorial and flat-out aggressive with their owners, creating a tense environment every time you need to check on the flock. Jack noticed that without the boys around, his hens became noticeably tamer, more curious, and much easier to handle for health inspections. This allowed him to catch minor issues like mites or bumblefoot early, with a level of precision he just couldn't get when he was dodging a rooster. This docility is a great preventative management tool that lowers the risk of accidental injury for both the keeper and the birds. When an animal fully trusts its caretaker, management becomes a joy rather than a constant struggle for control of the physical space in the coop. By cutting out the mating process, Jack also ensured his hens kept their plumage in pristine condition throughout the entire year. A hen with a full coat of feathers is a thermally efficient machine that doesn't waste energy trying to stay warm through bare patches on her back. This is a big deal, because feathers act as your bird's natural insulation and immune barrier against the elements and parasites. If a hen loses feathers on her back from a rooster's treading, her body enters a thermal emergency, forcing her to eat more just to survive. This phenomenon spikes your production costs because the feed that should be turning into an egg is being burned, just to keep her body temp up. By protecting the flock's feathers, Jack improved his feed conversion ratio, getting more eggs out of every bag of grain he bought. On top of that, there's a quality factor that your customers or your family will notice immediately, the strength and cleanliness of the shell. The stress of being chased by a rooster releases hormones in a hen that can cause shell modeling or microcracks, which shortens the egg's shelf life. Once those interruptions were gone, Jack's hens started laying eggs with much smoother, more uniform and tougher shells that were easier to clean. This means fewer losses from breakage and a much better looking product that reflects the high standards of a professional farm. Jack is now the perfect example of why technical observation should always come before traditions that haven't been questioned in years. His success wasn't luck. It was about understanding that a hen's emotional well-being is the real engine of profitability on a modern homestead. 
If Jack's story and these technical tips have helped you professionalize your setup, I'd love for you to become an active part of our community. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our deep dives into genetics and nutrition. Your support is what keeps us sharing high-value content that turns a passion for birds into a thriving homestead for keepers everywhere. Drop a comment below and let us know your experience with managing roosters and share this video with a friend who needs better results today. Always remember that true poultry wisdom is built on patience and the meticulous attention we pay to the details others simply overlook. Keep moving forward with that same dedication and grow alongside this great community of poultry enthusiasts we all love so much. The path to efficiency is paved with constant learning and those small adjustments that make the difference between a hobby and a successful enterprise. Thanks for sticking with us until the end and for trusting us as your partner in this noble craft of bird keeping. To your success, fellow breeder. Until next time.